Hello world, welcome back to Razor RC. I'm on vacation here in Osaka, Japan. Figured I'd check out a local hobby store, uh, see what they got going on. So I found this place not too far from where I was staying. I think it's called Super RC. Um, not exactly sure. It's, it's a completely Japanese store, so the website is all in Japanese. Doesn't really tell you what is uh, the name of the place even. So we're going to go walk inside here. Uh, this is what it looks like up these stairs here so as you can see on the posters on the wall in addition to RC stuff they've also got a bunch of airsoft stuff so I was kind of surprised uh, coming up the steps here you can check out more posters with the airsoft stuff a little tax-free thing going on and then here's the actual entrance on the second floor as you can see it's all in Japanese I have no idea what that says uh, but you know that's kind of part of the charm Japan obviously is uh, one of the hot spots for RC in the world. They got some world class brands like Sanwa, Futaba, Kyosho, Tamiya. So, how I found this place was I basically just Googled Tamiya and then uh, that popped up. So, this is the first aisle, and as you can see, it's got all the expensive stuff. So, a bunch of different radios. I didn't, never even heard of this, Fine Spec. Uh, radio from Tamiya, um, different versions. That's one interesting thing about Japan. They don't just sell like one radio. They sell that radio in a bunch of different configurations with different receivers and things. Here's a brand new M17 just came out. Uh, you can see the MT44, the M12S, MTS. And then also in this aisle are a bunch of the RC cars. So these are some radio runs, I guess, from Tamiya. Um, some buggies and stuff. And then I found some X-ray kits. Um, here's the Futaba radios, the 7PX here, 7XC, which I've never heard of. I don't know if that's unique, 4PV, 4PM. And then uh, Radio I've re reviewed the 3PV. So as you can see, a bunch of different versions. They got like the drift version, the touring car version, the TR set. I don't even know what these things mean. Um, so yeah, different uh, configuration. So that's kind of neat. Um, you can't really get that in the U.S. They just sell one or two versions. Um, further down in this aisle, some more kits here. Um, here's the X-ray kits once again. You can find a one carpet version, two-wheel drive, and a four-wheel drive of the uh, off-road buggies. So this store is pretty much focusing more on the on-road side. Um, drift cars, of course, a couple of Yokomos, and the only team associate kit I found, the B74, just came out. Um, so, yeah, it's really more, uh, you know, probably 95% just Japanese brands, and then a few of the other American or European brands sprinkled in here. So, this is uh, the Tamiya side. So, a bunch of cool Tamiyas re releases. Um, see up here some other on-road cars the trucks the tto2 chassis the comical versions pretty cool 934 black edition over on your side more tamiya so uh this store seems to sell <laughs> i think tamiya is probably their biggest brand or maybe tamiya is just super popular in japan not totally sure um, but they definitely carry a lot of tamiya kits um, Here's a lot of the re-releases. Uh, some more trucks from the other side. And then, you know, they, they seem like they carried like one of every Tamiya kit out there. A couple of grasshoppers, because I guess grasshoppers are pretty popular. And then some of the more modern uh, off-road buggies there. So the Neo Fighters and such. Um, the DTO2 and 03 lunch boxes, different uh, variations. Pretty neat how they don't just carry one of a particular uh, kit, but if there are more versions, they will actually stock them. So that was pretty neat to see. Some of their Tamiya on road stuff. Mm. Yeah, I'm not super familiar with the Tamiya stuff. Here's their. Uh, more modern off-road versions again. A little bit closer look there on what we're showing you. And then uh, some more um, other different types of kits. So here I actually found a couple of Axial kits. 
So these are the only uh, American or US branded off-road kits I found. Really the only crawlers uh, they seem to be stocking. Um, some more of the Tamiya on-road stuff. A lot of different cool looking kits. Um, buggies, the, the dual riders, some cool Subaru Brats, Avantes, Egress. Uh, I don't know if any of these are actually like rare or hard to get in the U.S. <laughs> I just don't know enough about Tamiya's. Uh, then you got some of the Kyoshos, the Laser ZX6, the RB6, some of their ready to runs with the Infernos, um, different variations there, the Mad Crushers. So, yeah, pretty cool little array of Kyosho stuff. And then, so that was pretty much the first aisle. Coming around the corner here, as you can see, there's pretty much like five different aisles. And looking down the aisles, it's all a ton of different parts. I mean, there must be thousands and thousands of RC parts, um, most of which, you know, a lot of it is just Japanese brands, stuff you can't find in the U.S., stuff you haven't really heard of, uh, just wheels, tires, bodies, nitro stuff gas stuff um the last aisle here got it more bodies um we'll go down one of the aisles here this is pretty much the tool aisle as you can see just tons and tons of different tools here's some wheels and tires um you know just more than you can really take in you could, you could spend probably days or weeks in this place and not actually see every single part that they actually carry in here. <laughs> so I'm not going to film every single thing. I don't even know what I don't even know what most of this stuff is. If you guys know what like these long bars are right here, let me know. Look like long aluminum bars. Lots and lots and lots and lots. I mean, these are really long aisles, probably 40, 50 foot aisles. I mean, this is one thing I could recognize, OS engine parts. Um, so even just the OS engine stuff, there's tons of things. In terms of the transmitter side, they carry a ton of replacement parts, repair parts for your transmitter. Obviously, the three big ones here in Japan is Futaba in orange. You got Stanwa in blue and then Copropo is uh, the third big Japanese transmitter brand. Just tons of parts, wheels, um, wires, etc. Here's a ton of different tools, hex drivers, um, reamers, nice little hootie parts, scissors, body scissors. Hex, uh, nut drivers. I mean, just look at the the clippers they got here. There must be like 30, 40 different types of clippers. More hoodie parts, shock stands, um, parts trays. You could spend a fortune just on tools here. Little parts boxes. And then this is like, uh, the rest of this thing is all like wheels and tires. Drift tires, on-road tires bazillion wheels that I I honestly can't uh, really identify but I mean look at all the wheels and tires like I said not a whole lot of off-road stuff so pretty much everything you hear is on-road drift uh, tires different scales 12th scale 10th scale and then towards the end here uh, a bunch of bodies I don't know if this is for a particular like mini Z class or what but a bunch of white bodies and then tons more parts down there. And then off to the side, they actually have a whole another section. Um, here you can see all the paints. To me, a spray, polycarbonate spray, of course. A bunch of, I think these are books, historical books. Um, so they also carry a uh, pretty decent model stuff, a lot of train stuff. And then they got this little indoor uh, track here in the back. So this is an on-road track. Go inside. Nice little pit area in the back there. Nice and clean. Lots of chairs and tables. And an on-road course. Uh, and then a bunch of the, you know, sort of scaled diorama type stuff. 
Um, they also do a bunch of the, the RC uh, modeling type stuff, I guess, or just modeling stuff. So yeah, um, pretty neat little store overall. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, uh, look inside and thanks for watching.